So, in, in the search for oneness, what happens in the apparent world, and it's only an appearance, in the history of the apparent world, what happens is that we have families. We have, in some way, other, what arises is the family, and what arises in the search for oneness is the idea of a father or a mother who will show us oneness or who will guide us to heaven or wherever you like. If you look at most of the religions, there's always a father figure or a mother figure that somehow is at the head of the movement or the religion. And obviously everybody that is involved in that religion follows the guidance of that father or mother. Even Buddhism, which denies the existence of God, somewhere subtly a Buddhist sees Buddha as his father or her father. So what, what is happening all the time in the game of the search for oneness is that oneness appears as Jesus or Buddha or whatever you like, Ramana Maharshi. And the followers of that particular religion, religion then try to copy or to try to copy the father, to try to do what the father tells them to do. Somehow that's there's a, there's a feeling in that in that setup in that structure of safety and and in a way it's quite easy. Although some of the things you're told to do or not to do are, are quite difficult. Nevertheless, you're sort of secure because you've got this this great guide either in heaven or somewhere floating around who's telling you what to do. And of course, he's got other fathers down on earth. Telling, also telling you, they're the sort of sub-fathers <laughs> or sub-mothers. And of course, all of that structure goes on supporting the idea that there is such a thing as an individual. Because the individual sees, actually subtly sees God or Christ or whatever you like, Buddha, as an individual who has, say, discovered something or is the source of a a secret or holy knowledge, which can then be followed by the person who is the disciple or whatever. So the whole emphasis in the world is of what I would call individual spiritual development. And it all is totally meaningless and utterly irrelevant to awakening. <coughs> It's the way the mind, the way the mind functions is only in time. Mind thinking is the clock ticking. The mind is the time maker. The mind is also the story maker. We make up our stories through the mind. Of course, there is no such thing as a mind, there's only thinking. But thinking creates the idea of time and a story and a path to somewhere. And it also creates the idea that the safest way to follow the path is to be told where the path is by a father or a mother that we can follow. It's all very comfortable and predictable. But awakening is the realisation that there is no individual and there is no father and no mother. The whole of the idea of hierarchy and dependence on a father and a mother completely collapses in awakening. Because what collapses more than anything, what is lost in awakening? Awakening and liberation are about a loss, not a gain. Something doesn't come from above and fill you with holy goodness or whatever. Awakening or liberation is a loss. It's a total loss of everything. And one of the parts of that loss which the individual do, depends on is the idea of fatherhood or motherhood. One that is greater. So, when awakening happens, the whole sense of a father or, or mother falls away. And in fact, awakening is total aloneness. Awakening, liberation, is total anarchy. And anarchy is having no leadership. There's no one to depend on anymore. There's nothing to depend on anymore. But what's also wonderful about uh, 
awakening and liberation is that it, if it's absolutely clear, which it can only be, otherwise it's not awakening and liberation, if it's totally clear, is that you don't need any leadership because there isn't anywhere to go. There's nothing to adulate, there's nothing to copy. There's no one to copy. All there is, is this. All there is, is the celebration of aliveness, just as it is, immediately. This is aliveness. So there's no, nothing to follow, there's nothing you have to be anymore, there's nothing you have to become. There's no one. All there is, is aliveness. All there is, is beingness. The whole idea of roles, fathers or mothers, simply collapses because it's a construct of the mind. There's no authority, there's no one that can teach you to be what already is. How can anyone do that? All teachers are dependent on the idea that there is an individual who has to become something else, who has to become better, stiller, more worthy, egoless, desireless, all that crap. That's, that's what teachers depend on, that whole idea of teaching you to become something. And all, all the time there is a sense that you are an individual, you have a, an in, well, a, a, a very strong feeling that you're not good enough. Because, of course, in a sense, from the moment of separation, you feel as though you've been rejected into out of paradise. So you've lost your lover. You've lost the perfect lover. When we lose our lovers, you know, the first thing that arises is, I'm not good enough. He doesn't love me because I'm no good. So the greatest loss of all is losing the perfect lover, paradise. So we always feel unworthy after that. And if somebody comes up to us and says, look, you're unworthy and I can teach you to become worthy, it's such a powerful message, it's so attractive. <clears throat> That's how the whole structure of the apparent world we live in, of religion and growth and becoming better, goes on being fed. Until it's realised by some, and it's becoming more and more realised, until it's realised and seen, or discovered that there is no one. There is no authority, there is no one, all there is is this. Because the other thing that tends to happen in that awakening is that we also lose our own roles. The, the role of being a <coughs> disciple, or even the role of being a mother or a father, begins to disintegrate. We don't need a role to, to make us feel that we are real and people in the world. We don't, it all just falls apart. Mothering can still happen, of course. The celebration of mothering. What's wrong with that? A brothering, a sistering. Of, but there isn't anyone in there. There never has been anyone in there. Suddenly there is no one in there that has to act in a certain way that's been taught. So what we're here to talk about today, let's start talking together if you want to. Um, on the question of there being no process, or, um, is it more or less likely that somebody is going to become enlightened um, regardless of their state of mind. I mean, could it, for example, be that somebody that's t um, totally involved and addicted to the work or the world or the appearance could, per chance... Absolutely. And it does happen, yes. So, in other words, then, when, when uh, you hear advice saying, um, well, you shouldn't really get involved with things that confirm your mind in its own existence, like I don't know, uh, name something, uh, some, some activity, yeah. um, then, then you shouldn't do that because then you're reinforcing your sense of ego and all that. doesn't matter. But, well, it's not that it doesn't matter. It's actually that idea, that suggestion, comes out of the deep ignorance. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the idea that there is someone there who can choose not to have a busy mind, let's say. 
or, it can, or the, that there is someone who can choose to be in good company or, or any of those ideas that you could choose not to have a busy mind are based on the idea that there is someone there who can choose not to have a busy mind. <laughs> there, is, there is no, so there isn't anyone. No, no. So, so if in fact you choose to do that because it, it makes your mind more peaceful, then that's just simply for your mind. Well, if you There's think you are it. choosing to have a peaceful mind and you succeed for about half an hour, which is usually how long it is, or five minutes, <laughs> then you, you, have, you have reinforced the idea that your choice brings about a result, but however te temporary. So you go on being reinforcing the idea that you are a person who has a choice that brings a result. So it's, it's traps within traps within Oh yeah, traps. it's all a game. It's yeah. one is playing the awful game yeah. that it's created called I am an individual. <laughs> <laughs> um, why, why is it that in, in this meetings, you said also before, you know, it can be um, stronger this, this awareness or, or, or consciousness or whatever. So in a way you would think that coming here would, would help, would, would, you know, would, you, would help you to, to, to I don't know, yes. to or how, how you want to call it. It doesn't help you, but it is a play, well, this, in this energy when two or more gather together, there is an opening to this, there's a readiness not in you, but there's a readiness for this to be heard. And there's also, energetically, which is much more powerful, an openness into the boundless. Okay? Now, but the point about that is you could say that that helps you. It doesn't actually help you, it's destroying you. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's all right, fine. Okay. Uh, but also, let's go right back to it. There's nothing you can do about being here or not being here. All right? So, you know, if you think it's good to be here, it doesn't mean you're going to be here next time. And also, there's nothing you can do about being open or not being open, about hearing this or not hearing it. Well, it happens or it doesn't happen. Coming here helps me to be more open. Well, you believe so, that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have to speak in English. But how, well, yeah, but hold so, on, how can you be more open? No, okay, there is... Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's amazing how our grammar is so, you know, used to go on reinforcing the idea that, that you will be more, you know, I will be more open. No, it's just not it's that. It is that there will be openness. Yeah. 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 But that makes you think that coming to these meetings, you know, is something that not can help me, but, but stimulate. But is open. Yeah, it's yeah, open. So, you know. Yeah, go on. <coughs> So, are you going to come next time? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know that. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's fine, I know I hear what you're saying. But, but you're then saying you can choose to be. You know. I mean, you can come and choose to... You can find out where I live and come and put a tent that you down the road and sort of feel the energy. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? There isn't anyone that can... It will happen or it won't happen. <laughs> I mean, I just want to be clear that what the, the thing about the tent isn't trying to say that this is anything to do with me, it's absolutely nothing to do with me. Yeah, I was planning to put my tent in. Oh, you were? Right? I'll show you a spot. Next to the blue. Yes. Oh, no. Hi, yeah. <laughs> How's the totally fucking pissed off club going? Have you got any more members? Much better. <laughs> I lost it. I uh, have, I, have I ruined your question? No, okay, ma'am. They go always, they turn around the same point. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
if is all getting rid of getting more detached or getting more aware that this, this ego doesn't have no substantial reality. Even though here and there I can catch, I, I can, you know, get a glimpse sense of that. So this is the basic spiritual thing. Is you, is believe. The, you believe. Yeah, is to stick, to try to stick in this state. To, to research, okay, now, you, okay, yeah, there is no research and this and this, but is that? You're still, you've got, you're still into the idea that yeah. somebody can detach. From Otherwise what? Because, let's be clear, if there is somebody detaching from the ego, I can tell you this, it's the ego doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the great spiritual ego that will See. detach itself from being egotistical anymore. And as it does, it oh, becomes okay. bigger. <laughs> In the last year, uh, I, I became a bit more acquainted with the teaching of Ramana and Ponjaji and Vilain, no? <laughs> and, still, still now, after many of the experiences, you know, I found in, in that. Uh, Linear. I, I found, you know, a certain truth. Right. So, the, the, where all the problem starts is from the identification with the ego. So, in a way or another, uh, an old religion, uh, uh, they look to be a way to loosen you from that identification. Yes. Even though through the, the millennia they <laughs> took, uh, you know, but the kern yeah. of, of all yeah. the spiritual systems is to, is to destroy the ego. Destroy the ego. Okay. Is that so? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is so that the, the, the basis of, of the majority of religion <laughs> or teachings of enlightenment is to destroy the ego. Because it's also even more deeply true that the basis of <laughs> the majority of spiritual teachings are total bullshit. <laughs> okay. are based on ignorance. The, the, the most, one, you said the fundamental most. Fundamental ignorance. Okay, the most. Well, all. Oh, all. Okay. <laughs> oh. So what is left? Let's, let's go for it. <laughs> What's left? What's no. left? Tell me what's no. left. No, is that? When you've kicked it all away, what's left? No, 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 I, I, no, not really. Uh, uh, I, 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 okay, I kick all this away. And what's left? Beginning with N. <laughs> Beginning with N. <laughs> Nothing. Can awakening happen uh, gradually? Or is it always... No, it doesn't happen gradually. It's always uh, spontaneously. Yes. Although these days it doesn't necessarily mean that there's an event. Or quite more and more it seems these days that there isn't an event. People wake up one morning and awake, a, a different perception has, arrived, has arisen. And the sense of me isn't there then the sense of me will come back and try to claim that, and then, then it's that period before liberation. <coughs> but, but certainly, the dropping away of me and the seeing of one is, is a direct and immediate thing, rather than something that you can creep up on, or something that you know, just comes in bits. There aren't bits of oneness. You know, the seeing of oneness is a direct, complete seeing. And also liberation, you, you don't, you know, it isn't a gradual thing in a sense, although the, 
the dissipation of the me looking for the one, the, 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 me, the me's power or apparent power sort of dissipates in that period of awakening, which you could call a gradual thing. But the seeing of me is also oneness, is a sudden direct. There's somebody just behind you. I feel we are always in a kind of approach. Of a approach. An approach. Approach to I what mean. is. Approach yeah. to the mystery yes. that is there. Which and even when we call something emptiness, it becomes an object. Yes. There cannot be any emptiness. Which can be approached. So yeah. far we are totally lost yeah. in Absolutely. our in our try, in totally. our search, to find anything, to understand anything. Yeah. Socrates, he has said, I know that I don't know. This yeah. has been his last word. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> There's a book written called The Book of One, I think it's called, and it's by a guy who's written about what he calls advisor, which yeah. is not to. And in it, the book <laughs> includes all sorts of processes and approaches to oneness. How can anything approach oneness if there is only oneness. The very movement forward is oneness. This is oneness, not oneness is there and I can get there. It can't be approached. There's nothing to approach because approaching is oneness. It's possible, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very possible that there are people here who will become more and more fixed in the idea of individual choice. Because don't forget, the mind is resisting this all the time in this room. All, nearly all the questions are yes, but. <laughs> so there's tremendous, obviously, a tremendous resistance to this. And there are some people for whom an opening into this will happen, and there are other people who will, res will resist it so strongly that they can walk away with more resistance than they came with. <laughs> it's very, very it's the most threatening thing of all because it's about your destruction. I'm willing. You're willing? Yeah. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with me, whether I'm ready or not. Um, you will never be ready. Yeah, All the time you are there, okay. you are unready. Mm. So, but it still can happen. <laughs> Although I'm not ready. In a sense, it doesn't happen. I'm afraid we're going to go there. This is really awful. There is no such thing as awakening in the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> you just said people wake up with a little a different perception. No, people don't wake up. There is only this. And in this, there is the idea that there isn't this. When the idea of this isn't it falls away, there is only this. But it doesn't happen to anyone. Nobody awakens, nobody becomes liberated. But awakening happen. Well, if you want to say, the nearest I can get to it is that what seems to happen is the falling away of the idea that there is anyone who needs to become awakened. That's all that you could say. Apparently it happens. So an illusion, an illusion drops away, the illusion that there is somebody who needs liberation. Yeah. And this, of course, I can do nothing about. No, because you believe you <laughs> yeah. need liberating. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and does this happen at random? <laughs> well, no, because it doesn't. And again, you see, what you're doing is personalise it. Will it happen to him or him or her? It doesn't happen to her or him or him. It didn't happen to this. So it doesn't happen to people. 
but he hates this. <laughs> yeah, I understand now. It has nothing to do with the people, in fact. No. It, in it, fact, it, it's it, the opposite. When there isn't anybody, this is all there is. Right, right, right. And even whilst there is somebody here, this is all there is. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do to fall away. No. It's a bit like, I mean, the simile, a similar thing is, the, is at the moment that you know, people in the world are saying that the planet is being destroyed. Yeah? So there are quite a lot of people around who think that we should save the planet. Can I, I, can, I can suggest to them one way of saving the planet, the only way, if they all fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they're trying now to reach other moons and other... It's the similar thing. It's, it is that you're in the way of what you're looking for. And we are, all the people in the world, are in the way of are destroying the planet. It's the people that are destroying the planet, but they have the arrogance to believe they can save it too. <laughs> And the only way they can really save it is to leave, yeah. which is probably what's going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Already a lot of people left. <laughs> Second, uh, 26 December, 200,000. I noticed that, no, that nature only has to do that. Tony, what is the fun of struggling, me struggling, all these people in the room struggling, you really seem to enjoy us struggling. I enjoy you. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. <laughs> this enjoy, this that being enjoy, celebrates aliveness, and part of that aliveness is struggle. But there are people who are totally fascinated by the struggle. Most of the people in the world are totally fascinated by individualism and doing it, getting it and all that. It's not for them, it doesn't seem to be a struggle. Underlying it, there's a sort of despair or a desperation, but they don't usually recognize that. So we, I enjoy in my struggle, in me struggle. Oh, I don't know whether you are, are you? Well, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't cry about it. No, no. Some people do, and others don't. It's, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It's even more gorgeous when, in a way, you see the meaningness of it, you know, that there's no need to struggle anymore. That sort of really becomes fun. That's what I just felt, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Hi, yeah. It's easier to talk about high-performance cars with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. It's easier. You've talked a lot uh, today about um, that no one's here, we're not here, nothing exists. Um, nothing exists is a funny one, really. That, you know, what is here is both real and unreal. That is getting to what my question is oh, now. Okay. Is um, Can you talk a little bit more? You've talked about nothing being here or we are not here but there's also the witness so that through enlightenment one also sees what is here oneness appearing as well we don't see the oneness sees the you know, the, the watcher is the no thing which sees that we're trying to we are something trying to be no thing Can in other words the no-thing watches itself apparently being something, trying to be nothing. <laughs> that, that, was, that was what I was asking you to, to uh, expand. Yeah. I can't expand it really, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there is no-thing, and no-thing happens, so the everything is the no-thing happening. There aren't two things. <clears throat> uh, but when the no-thing starts to move, when it comes over the wall that says, thinks, I am a person and this is manifestation, it's still no thing moving and thinking it's something. And in that thinking that it's something, it also arises the idea of there being a separate individual. When the separate individual is there, it feels as though it's a me, I'm separate. But there can come a point when 
there's a scene of that game being played. But what's so what you call liveliness? Li well, yeah, but yeah, liveliness, liveliness is oneness. But in this situation where you believe you're, you're dreaming that you are an individual, that which is uh, the source of everything sees that it's dreaming that it's an individual. That's the watcher seeing the apparent individual alive. So that's awareness seeing aliveness through the eyes of an apparent Tony Parsons. Well, it's, no, it's, it's already separated itself. Uh, this is all artificial. But, it, but the watcher is, is seeing that there is something that thinks, thinks it's separate. It is actually itself, but, it, but it's dreaming that it's separate. So the watcher is the source, is the no thing, is the silence, which sees that there is a game going on called I am a separate person. Okay, I'm none the wiser, but thank you. No. That's why, in a, in a sense, I say it's the beginning of the end. It sounds then like it's a journey. Of course it isn't, because there is no such thing as a journey or time. But, but the beginning of the end is the sudden seeing from nowhere that Tony Part or sorry, what's your name? Hans. Hans is pretending to be Hans, a separate person. That's when. Hence, the separate person begins to die. Now, that sounds like something that's happening in time, it isn't, but that's the beginning of the end of Hence. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I've bought a Mazda MX-5, Claire has. <laughs> Does existence give uh, lessons uh, <coughs> to people who are not uh, awakened, or they, or they just let you be awakened forever? <laughs> well, there isn't something out there that can give lessons, but the whole of the apparent life apparent process and, and what seems to happen to the person is simply the invitation to see that there is no one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of everything that's happening right now is the invitation for the seeker to see that there's only oneness. So I should be aware, I could be aware now of this invitation. You won't ever be aware of it, but you could, it could suddenly be realised that there's no one there who needs to be aware of it. No way to survive, huh? I didn't get that. No way to survive. Well, surviving happens. You know, that's, that's surviving. Oh yeah, I'm surviving well. <laughs> that, but surviving has no relevance to awakening, that's just survival happening. It's about this change of perspective and the awareness. And so, is it not so that the moment you recognize awareness actually being you and not this, the, the me is gone? Yeah, I mean, you don't realize yeah. there is just the scene, but there is no one. There is no one, there is no yeah. one. But invariably, what seems to happen is that you come back to claim that. Yeah. That's what seems to happen. It doesn't have to. I mean, uh, awakening and liberation can happen <coughs> at the same time, yeah. although there is no such thing. They can both be simultaneous. Yeah. Yeah. But invariably, it seems with people that we, we meet and yeah. this happens to, there seems to be a period where the me wants to come back and claim it. Yeah. Is, is there a longing of the me? Oh, so the me can only long. 
I like the me can only dream, the me, me also can only long, that's the game. Ah. The me longs for oneness. And is there a longness of oneness, wanting to be one? No. There's no longing of there oneness, is only oneness, oneness, oneness to draw me here? Uh, don't forget that oneness pretends to be two, and then the longing begins. But in fact, oneness longs for nothing, because one is nothing and everything. So it doesn't have to long for anything. Um, a liberation cause and effect seems to be. Um, but there was a wise man sometimes who said, yes, it may be so that cause and effect are not there anymore, but you cannot ignore cause and effect. And ignore? Effect. You cannot ignore. No, in, in liberation, all of the laws of duality go on functioning for no one. So cause and effect seems to be functioning in what's called the story. So if you hit a car, you have to pay the insurance premium. That seems to go on, but it goes on for no one. But they're not ignoring. It's, 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 it is being. So not ignoring is being. Yeah. So there's no difference to these laws, uh, whether you believe in them Except or not. that they become and are seen as part of the story which yes. is meaningless. Mm -hmm. They're seen as the play of oneness, rather than being significant and being uh, things that happen that will take you somewhere. It's seen by no one that there's nowhere to go, but it so happens that cause and effect in the story seem to happen without any meaning. If there's no one, who's driving this car then? <laughs> one is. So one is driving the one that appear, arises as a car. So who's enjoying it? Nobody. Well, the, the, there isn't anybody to enjoy just it. Wait it is your just money. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're still into enjoyment, aren't you? So what is happening isn't at all relevant anymore. The joy of the liberation is simply being. Being Tony Parsons? No, 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 being. But you are witnessing Tony No, Parsons. I'm not witnessing anything. I, I am all that is, and the joy of being all that is, is a boundless being. How come that after awakening, life seems to be so much easier and flowing and better? Because, because to, a, to a great extent, the neurotic drive that pushed you into trying to fill the loss is no longer there. So things seem to work in a more harmonious way. And the trouble with that is that the mind then thinks, oh, I want to become in line, so it's all harmonious. You can't do that, but it is like that. That doesn't mean to say that disharmony won't happen still. Yeah. But yesterday we talked about uh, it was a trust. And trust. Yes. And I realized that um, before, trust, I, I had to tell myself, just trust it as everything is okay. And now it's more like I cannot not trust. Mm. It's like... Mm. I, my sense is that there's a resonance there with what's being said. It's totally, somewhere there's a totally yes about this. Yeah. And the mind will, you know, mm. But somewhere underneath that there's a total yes. Yeah. And that, you know, in my way, you could say could be a sort of trust. Yeah. Because although it hasn't been seen yet, there's a total knowing that this is it. Yeah. This is it. We all know this is it. We're always looking out there pretending it isn't. But... <laughs> so as you sit there, maybe everything that is arising, whatever is arising is this. If it's serenity, it's his oneness. If it's an idea that I don't get this, it's oneness. If it's impatience, it's oneness. Whatever is there is this. Is this oneness, is that energy? 
you could say it's energy, it's aliveness, it's being, whatever it is. The trouble with the mind is that the mind sees what's arising, which might be frustration or boredom or, and thinks it isn't it. Because, it, because the mind thinks in terms of duality. You know, this feeling of frustration isn't it. There must be something better than this or... But in fact, whatever is arising is this. Can you explain the word duality a little bit more clearly? Well, duality, uh, in separation there are two, there seem to be two. In separation we become individual and see everything else as something else. So in separation there's subject and object, apparently. So if we're sitting there, we're taught, or we believe that, you know, liberation is being... And if we're sitting there and feeling... Fuck this. <coughs> then the mind would think that there's something that's wrong and there's something else that's right. Whereas actually, fuck this is it. Or whatever. What am I having for tea tonight? Shall I ask a question? It's whatever is arising is oneness. Have you any way of getting to your centre? There is no centre. I think a lot of people here have made sure they've got a centre. Yeah, there is a belief, there, there is no centre. Um, the belief is that in some way or other this can be seen from somewhere. There isn't anywhere to see this from, there is only seeing. So people are sitting in this room thinking that I have to see something, whereas actually it already is being seen. If people are looking at this, this is what, this is oneness. But it's not seen from anywhere, it is simply seen. Whereas the teaching is, see it from your centre, see Tony from your centre, see Tony from your heart, see Tony from the inner. See, <laughs> see, see, see Tony without, without so, thinking about it. Well, before. yeah, but that's another thing, you know, if you're seeing Tony and thinking about it, that's what's arising, seeing Tony and thinking about it. There's nothing right or wrong with anything, it is what it is. So really the mind starts thinking there's a certain way of doing things, so I throw awareness and work out. You're back in... You know, what was the, main... the strange thing about that is that when the mind thinks there's a way of seeing that, this, that's also this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying, to, trying to extract from you um, about the, the way in which to communicate without the mind. Is there some sort of... I, hate, I know you hate the word method, but there's a lot of people sitting here who are sitting in one form or other of frustration or trying to go through the process to get somewhere near what you're talking about, myself included. And I'm just trying to find a way that I can just not think and absorb what you're saying without thinking. Is no, you can't method? do that. You That's can't what I do it and do. you don't need to do it. There is something that's seeing what's happening. It doesn't matter about what's happening. It is that which sees what's happening. It's the looker, the one that looks, not you, the one that sees this. The knower, if you like, it's the knowing of what's happening. It doesn't matter a fuck what's happening, that's what I'm trying to say. The mind will come in and try and, you know, measure what's happening, and that's trying to make one thing better than another or judge what's happening. In fact, what is happening is known, and it's the knower that is being. <coughs> know what's happening. Who is to judge the mind? Yeah, including the mind, the activity of the mind. But there, there is something that knows <coughs> the mind is thinking, that thinking is happening. It's very simple, it's not, it's not anything esoteric, it's sitting on a chair or feeling indigestion or whatever is, it's right there right now, it's immediate for everyone in this room, when I, you know, there is something happening. That's it. The knowing of something happening. You're now talking about witnessing something happening. 
Yeah, you could call it witnessing, yeah. So by witnessing something's happening is by not thinking and not relating and not you, attaching to it. It isn't you that witnesses, it is that which witnesses. It is that which knows. What's in this room is not you, it is the knowing of this. You can't do it, but it's happening. It's sensing that that's there. So I'm going to hammer this one still further, so I get this, so I get this as clear as what we're calling you for. Um, I pay. Oh, he pay. Did he pay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's a typical of you. He's a real <laughs> <laughs> Always get someone else to pay for me. Um, I'm still trying to, I, I understand, I was get an idea of the idea of, of uh, living in oneness or of being aware and that we are all part of exactly the same thing. I'm still trying to get back to um, oneness appearing as two and then the eyes of witness through Tony Parsons, through Hans Kluger's or, or through Jörg Vesterbos here. I mean, you are standing there and you are talking to us. This is how it appears to you. All of the time there's a sense or belief in an individual. The dream of individuality continues. And then what it looks out at and sees is apparently another individual. But you're not a I dream. Don't... You're not a dream, you're a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anyone there. Oh, well, that handsome. Surely you still no, see No, I me. see a handsome form. Well, quite handsome. <laughs> I see a form. I see the form and I hear the voice. But there is no one that I see there. This is unconditional love, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so I see that there is no one that is suffering. Yeah, yeah I, I, this is, I get an idea. This is why in this sort of setting there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of expansiveness and freedom. And that has nothing to do with Tony Parsons. That's just a character. But what I am all it is, and I see that there's no one sitting there suffering. But you do see someone sitting here. I see a form, but I don't see a person. My words, an individual separate person. There is no such thing. Is this one of those situations of splitting hairs? No, absolutely not. This is a situation my, of describing, my is something, describing something that has no meeting with another concept. It's, it's describing something that is beyond understanding. It's not splitting hairs at all. No, but your, your form is the same form as the radiator or the wall behind you. We are all Thank made... Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we are all made of... Um, in one the stuff. Of, of the stuff. Stuck. Great word, stuff. We're all made of stuff. Gorgeous. But then, looking at you, you, you have one form, and the radiator indeed has another form. But they are both only oneness. Yeah, no, that, no, that, not that, one that, or the other is more significant. That I understand. I mean, the basis of you is atoms, and the basis of the radiator is atoms. No, you're particularising. I mean, now you're talking science now. That's got nothing to do with this. Although, in a way, it sort of does point to it. Well, if you did, scientists, if you... scientists are now discovering that everything that arises comes out of nothing. Yeah, that's a, math that's a very complicated mathematical equation. About something that's utterly simple and obvious when there's no one looking. <laughs> that's the difficult bit. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty that scientists have is that it's, it's very lovely and what they're discovering is very exciting, but they also say they're going to discover the source of life. But if one of them discovers the source of life, he won't be able to describe it to anybody else, neither can I. So he won't be able to write a thesis in the, whatever you call it, you know, and say the source of life is no thing, because everybody will lock him up. Uh, a few, yeah. a few seconds ago, you you talk of before liberation. Just a bit nearer. Yeah. Before liberation, is there a before? No, there's no before and there's no, no. liberation. No. 
That's uh, well. That can, but, when, but when that which is nothing and everything communicates with that which yeah. thinks it's something, then that which is nothing speaks in the language of something. One can strive to uh, for uh, more money or more uh, food or uh, se over sex. It's more sex. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. that is fut futile, futile. Quite fun, though. For fun. <laughs> but uh, what is more uh, futile or superfluous than striving for liberation or awakening? It, it's already there. It's yes, I know, but what, in some way, subtly, what you're doing is making it wrong, making the search wrong. Oh. I mean, there are some teachers that say it's stupid to search and that, you know. Yeah. That somehow makes it wrong, and it's not wrong, it's defined, it's right. just what it is. Seeking is, seeking for money yeah. and seeking for enlightenment are both the same thing. There's nothing wrong with them, that's what's happening. Hmm. But, but if it is, it is already there. Yeah. Not those partly. Are, that's, well, those are words. Words. I use them too. Oh. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> they don't get anywhere near. Yeah. Oh. oh yes, uh, I mean I could I stand like, here and just say like, it's like already, there is only this. All there is is this all day. But yeah, probably not many people would come and I'd run out of a bloody <laughs> audience. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, it wouldn't be appropriate because somewhere in the search from the seeker's point of view, there's yeah. a, a, a language and a questioning about this which is responded to out of nothing. Of course, in the end, the question's coming from nothing also. Yeah. But in some way or other, there's some <coughs> communication that goes on that points to that which is beyond the communication. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. There is, there is one ingredient in this meeting you've completely forgotten today. <laughs> ingredient? Oh, right. What's that? You haven't told us a joke yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I've run out of jokes, but I, I, I told a joke on Friday evening and one yesterday, and it's only two every weekend, I ration it. <laughs> I'm, I'm try, I'll try and think of some old joke that you may not have heard. But... <laughs> you missed the good, some good jokes. But I heard the one about St. Peter. So there was a Methodist <laughs> and a priest and a Catholic priest and um, a rabbi in an aeroplane, a private aeroplane that was flying to somewhere. And they also had a, there was a choir, I think there was a choir boy there in the, they were going to somewhere to some sort of service. And it was a private aeroplane and the pilot came out to them and said, I'm really, really sorry. But, in fact, there's something wrong with the engine of the plane. You know, and it's going to crash in about ten minutes. And there are only two parachutes, and I've got one of them, and I'm jumping right now, so he jumped. And the Methodist said, this is awful, there's only one parachute, who are we going to give it to? And what is a Methodist? Well, it's one of the a religion, it's a religion. And he said, I think we should give it to the young boy. He has his whole life ahead of him, you know. We should give the parachute to the young boy. And the, and the rabbi said, oh, fuck the young boy. And the Catholic said, well, well have we got time? secret and the answer to life is that there is no answer. All there is is aliveness. All there is is this. Thank you. <laughs>